everyone. I want to go through some solutions for the fourth quiz for Math 0110. The quiz wasn't particularly well done, and I'm worried about the test because the test bears a lot of similarities to this quiz. First question asks for the second derivative of a given function. In order to find the second derivative of a function, you have to first find the first derivative. So we look at the type of function this is. It matches the type w to the power of 4. When you take the derivative, we'll get 4 times w to the 3 times w prime. But that's called the chain rule. So for our particular function, uh, 4, then our function w is the same, x to the 3 minus 2x, all to the power of 3, and then multiply by w prime. w prime is the derivative of the inside. Derivative of x to the 3 is 3x squared. Derivative of 2x is 2. Now, if all we needed was the first derivative, we'd stop here. wouldn't go any further. Second derivative requires us to take the derivative once more. However, it's worthwhile, before we do that, to rewrite this first derivative. I can multiply that 4 into the bracket 3x squared minus 2, not into the bracket that has a power of 3 on it. You can't multiply constants into brackets with powers other than power 1. So we'll have x to the 3 minus 2x, all to the 3, and then multiply 4 times 3x squared, that's 12x squared, and then 4 times 2, 8. Okay, now we're going to take the derivative again. f double prime, it's a different color. Purple, okay. So f double prime of x. And we need a product rule. And this is what went wrong in a lot of the quizzes. At this step here, I'm not doing a product rule. It's a times b prime plus b times a prime. So a is our original, our first function there. A to the, a to the x to the 3 minus 2x all to the 3 times b prime. The derivative of 12x squared is 24x plus b times a prime, so 12x squared minus 8 times a prime. Too messy. Multiply that by, by a prime. So a prime, we're taking the derivative of x cubed minus 2x all to the power of 3. So that one's more complicated. I'll write that down to the side. B, no, not B, we already did that. So looking at A. A is equal to x to the 3 minus 2x, all to the power of 3. And A prime, we need a chain rule, 3 times x to the 3 minus 2x, all to the power of 2, multiplied by the derivative of the inside. 3x squared minus 2. And that's what gets put on for a prime on the right hand side. So we have 3 times x cubed minus 2x all squared times 3x squared minus 2. number one. And we don't have to simplify that because we're not taking another derivative, not doing a third derivative. If we have to do a third derivative, you definitely simplify. Okay, next piece. Next question. We're asked to find a dy by dx, which also means y prime, and then evaluate it. And one of the common mistakes that happened here was
was um, first plugging numbers in, plugging X in, plugging Y in, then taking the derivative, and you can't do that. So we begin by taking the derivative of each term in the expression. So the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. The derivative of x times y, well that's a product rule. That's an a times a b. So that's minus bracket a b prime plus the a prime. plus the derivative of y squared is 2 times y times y prime. It's an implicit derivative. x equals variable. y equals function. So this is like having a function to the power of 2, like w to the power of 2. The derivative of w to the power of 2 is 2 times w times w prime. And then we have equals the derivative of 4. 4 is a constant, so it's derivative of 0. And now let's fill in that bracket. A is x. B prime, the derivative of y, is not 1. It's y prime. y is a function. Just like the derivative of f is f prime, the derivative of y is y prime. Plus b times a prime, y times the derivative of x. x is not a function, x is a variable. So when we take the derivative of 1 times x, we get 1. Okay, now at this point, it's safe to re it's safe to replace. If all you wanted was y prime at the point, it would be safe to replace the x's and y's with zero and negative two respectively. However, we're going to keep going. I'm going to isolate. Be careful with the next step. That negative sign has to be distributed through the bracket. Okay, now let's move all the terms that don't contain y prime. Move them over to the right. So the x y prime stays, the 2y y prime stays, and then I'm going to add y to both sides and add, or rather subtract, 3x squared from both sides. Next step in rearranging is common factor of y prime for both pieces on the left. So we have negative x plus 2y. The right hand side doesn't change. y minus 3x squared. And finally, we can write y prime is y prime is equal to y minus 3x squared over negative x plus 2y. Almost done the question. Last part is plug in 0, negative 2. That means x is 0, y equals negative 2. So we'll get negative 2 minus 3 times 0 squared divided by negative 0 plus 2 times negative 2. So simplify that, negative 2 minus 0 over negative 4. So that's negative 2 over negative 4, which is positive 1 over 2, the negatives cancel. Okay. Let's see. Next, next page. So we're asked to use the properties of exponents to simplify each of these expressions. So one of the exponent laws, I'll write that off to the left, is if we have a to the x over a to the y, we can write that as a to the power of x minus y. So we have 5 to the power of 3 minus 6, which is 5 to the power of negative 3. And that's an acceptable answer. 
There's another acceptable answer. If this is multiple choice, you're going to have to be able to identify that those two are equivalent. 5 to the negative 3 is the same thing as 1 over 5 to the positive 3. And it isn't that onerous to multiply 5 by itself 3 times. 5 times 5 is 25. And then that's 25 cents. 5 times 25 cents is $1.25. Okay, next one. There's a, there's a huge number of ways you could do part B. But here's the easiest way. By using an exponent law that says a to the x times b to the x is a times b to the x. So we could rewrite this as 8 times 2 to the 1 half, which is 16 to the 1 half. So power of 1 half means square root. So we have the square root of 16, which is 4. Okay. Let's see. So a negative exponent, I'll write this, this isn't an exponent law that I'm going to write. This is a neat trick. a over b to the negative x can be rewritten as b over a to the positive x. Negative signs mean flip top and bottom. We have something downstairs, bring it up. We have something upstairs, bring it down. Equivalent, flipping top and bottom. So if we use that property, we have 5 over 1 to the positive 2. Now here's an honest exponent law. a over b to the x can also be written as a to the x over b to the x. So here we can write this as 5 to the 2 over 1 to the power of 2. 5 to the 2 is 5 times 5, which is 25. 1 to the 2 is 1 times 1, which is 1. So we get 25 for that example. Okay. Question 4. We write as a log of a, sing of a single expression. That means we want this to say log of one thing. And ln, so as a note, ln of x means it's a log function, it's log base e of x. e is Euler's number, 2.7, and so on. Okay. Now, in order to rewrite this as a log of a, log of a single expression, we need to use several log properties. Here's one of them. c times the log of a is the same as the log of a to the power of c. So if we use that exponent law on all three of these pieces, we have the log of x cubed plus the log of y squared minus the log of z to the power of 4. That's your choice. You could have left the minus sign with the power as well. So you have plus ln of z to the negative 4. It doesn't make a difference. It will give you the same answer. Okay, next piece. You have the ln of a plus the ln of b. We can rewrite that as the ln of a multiplied by b. So we'll use that to combine the first two terms. Ln of x to the 3 multiplied by y to the 3. So a is x to the 3, b is y to the 2. The 3 there. We still have ln z to the 4 being subtracted. We need one more exponent, one more log rule. Log rule is ln of a minus ln of b is the ln of a divided by b. So we can write this, our a is x cubed y squared and our b is z to the 4. We can write this as the log of x cubed y squared over z to the 4. And there it is as the log of a single expression. Okay, next example. 
You can solve for an x that's trapped in the exponential by taking a log of both sides. And you choose the base of the log based on the base of the exponent. Here, our base of the exponent is e, so I'm going to use a log function with the base of e, which means log. I'm going to take the log of both sides. I call this in class logging both sides. The reason why we use ln is for the next step. So I can cancel the ln e using the cancellation law. I'll write that down. That log base b of b to the a equals a for any base b. So here we have log base e of e to the x plus 1 is equal to x plus 1. And we want to get x all by itself. We're almost there. Subtract 1 from both sides, x is equal to 1 of 4, minus 1. And you can't subtract the 4 and the 1. The 4 is trapped in the log function, the 1 is not in there, it's outside there. So that's the answer. Okay, now the bonus question. Solve for x. This time, x is trapped in an exponential, with which itself is trapped in a log. And this is quite a journey to solve this one, so here we go. In the previous example, the exponential function was isolated for already. We didn't have to do any fancy rearranging. It's the same for a log function. You want to get that all by itself first and then manipulate from there. So I want to get the 8 not to be in front of the log function. I need it gone. The easiest way to do that in this case is to divide both sides by it. So 16 over 8, that's 2, equals 8 over 8, cancels out. So ln of 2 plus e to the 2x. Now we're going to exponentiate. Or I should write log rule that was used. Uh, log. Oh, I already did that. Okay. So now we're going to do this similar thing. We're going to say we want to use this property e to the power of log base b of a equals a. It's the other cancellation law. So you're going to put that, put that, how that fits into this example is instead of logging both sides, we can perform a different operation. We can exponentiate both sides. We can raise both sides as powers on the same base. You can use any base you want. So if you wanted, you could write this as 5 squared equals 5 to the power of log and all that stuff. But using 5 isn't very helpful because you won't be able to use a cancellation law. The number you want to use is e. You want to raise both sides as powers on e. So e to the power of 2 is equal to e to the power of 1 of 2 plus e to the 2x. And we can cancel e1. So we have e squared is equal to 2 plus e to the 2x. Almost done. Just kidding. We want to get the exponential all by itself. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. e squared minus 2 is equal to e to the 2x. Now the exponential is isolated, we can use logs to, to untrap the x. So I'm going to log both sides. The log of e squared minus 2. Both things on the left have to be inside the one log function. You have log of e squared minus log of 2. It doesn't work like that. Equals the log of e to the 2x. Cancellation law on the right. Log e cancels. We can't do that same thing on the left because there's two terms in there. So log of e squared minus 2 is equal to 2x. Now we're almost done. Divide both sides by 2. So x is the log of e squared minus 2 over 2. And if you got one of the versions of the quiz that have 3s um, instead of 2s, you do it the exact same way. Just you have different numbers but the same step, same process.